Good evening. First and foremost, I want to thank our investors for their time uh, and being, being able to listen to this presentation. Uh, my name is Jordan Lim. I'm the founder of Griffin Pens, and I'm here to talk to you about my company. Uh, Griffin Pens is a fictitious e-commerce company focused on rebranding and elevating the writing experience um, for your average consumer. Uh, we seek to bring the style of a luxury pen to your day-to-day -day job. Now, our mission our mission and vision, first and foremost, is to rebrand the writing experience. Um, oftentimes, uh, we perceive pens or writing utensils to just be a means to an end, uh, just a tool for you to write something down or jot something real quick. But we believe writing is so much more than that. Writing is, for, writing is the ability for a person to put a thought, put it down on paper. Um, but when you think of some of the key um, milestones or moments in a person's life, you think about that first time accepting your job offer, that first check you wrote, that first contract you signed, it all requires a signature and the act of writing. And we believe special moments such as those requires a special pen to commemorate. Our vision, our mission and vision expanded, our vision is to elevate the writing experience, to promote thoughtful communication. We believe by holding something more of value, it will, uh, the end user will be more thoughtful, more cognizant of what they write because there'll be an element of conservatorship towards how they use it. Um, and affordable luxury. We wanna provide the glitz and glamor that may not be commonly afforded to your average consumer, but we wanna bring that experience to them. Our, product, our mission has been broken up into three segments, a product mission, a social mission, and an economic mission. Uh, our product mission, our value proposition is very simple, uh, more for less. You have the look and feel of a luxury pen without a fractional cost. Our social mission is to be cognizant of um, the social issues going around us and to um, initiate um, charity campaigns. A portion of the sales go towards charities um, affecting change within our community. And ultimately, an economic mission. As a business, our goal is to maximize profits, but we wanna do it in an ethical way. How you do something is equally as important as what gets done. Uh, finding the blue ocean. We believe that assessing the luxury stationary market, that there is an untapped market and that we have the opportunity to be a disruptor. Um, when you think of luxury style goods, for example, cars, Ferraris, Maseratis, um, Lamborghinis, McLarens, these are all brands that people are familiar with. But on the contrary, you don't typically see these uh, companies market themselves to the average consumer. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a commercial for any of these brands um, just on TV, casually watching um, sports? We venture to say not often. And the same applies to luxury goods because luxury or luxury pens because luxury goods um, commonly tend to market themselves. So we believe by bringing the marketing towards the average consumer, there is uh, untapped demographic here. And now further elaborating on our customer segmentation. Um, who is the ideal Griffin customer? Well, the ideal Griffin customer uh, satisfies three key criteria. The first being a full-time male professional between the ages of 22 to 34, and they spend an average of 20 plus minutes a day on social media. Talking about the first criteria, full-time male professional, uh, we believe that there is a growing market. As you can see the trends over the last 20 years, um, the number of full-time employed men in the U.S. has grown, and we believe that based off of this trend, it will continue to grow. Secondly, um, still along the first criteria, the gender wage gap between the 20 most common occupations for men um, is vast. When you look at the top uh, occupations for men, 20 most common, you see CEOs, software developers, managers, accountants, sales representatives. Uh, these are all positions that require the act of writing um, or are commonly desk jobs. So not only do you have a larger base, you have a larger base with more money to spend um, with a relevant contextual setting for them to use our product. The reason for the ages 22 to 34 um, rests in the impulse buying nature of that age range. On top of the, the fact that those between ages 22 to 34 are commonly starting out their careers, um, and are looking to impress their managers. E-commerce market has grown over the last, well, just it's constantly grown with a projection of growth of 12% per year, uh, projecting $566 billion in 2023. And the last criteria, 20 plus minutes a day 
uh, social media usage is because the fact that we are an e-commerce company, we rely heavily on people seeing our ads. So those people who are on social media, the more they use it, the more likely they are to um, come into contact with our company. Our corporate structure is a sole proprietorship. Since it's just me, since it's an e-commerce model, it's able to be very lean. But as the company scales and grows in popularity in our brand, uh, we intend to file for an LLC later as um, profits can then be uh, reinvested into hiring accountants, more marketers, um, et cetera, to make sure that both the company and our customers have liability insurance. As an e-commerce company, our social media strategy is critical um, and really the bedrock of our success. Our strategy for customer acquisition is to use targeted Facebook and Instagram ads, um, and then to really assess um, the response towards these ads, data analysis, and to create a feedback loop to get that customer interaction, to respond to that interaction, and then ultimately to create effective ads, the most effective ads, um, for our customer base. Uh, we want to build customer loyalty. We believe this can be done through original content, resources to help the customer, because we're not just invested in making the sale. We're invested in what happens after the sale. Uh, we're invested in this professional development of our customers. Um, and this can be promoted through innovative social media campaigns. Uh, we can have a hashtag campaign for customers to tag us on what are they writing. Show us a pen and picture. Show us a plug on what you're writing, any of your um, written works. And we'll be more than happy to promote it on our website. And we believe that this will be an added layer of customer interaction. Um, customers on social media will be more than happy to say, hey, look, to their sphere of influence online, um, I was featured here and promoted, put on their resumes. Um, and as a result, there'll be a relationship built. Uh, competitive advantages. Now, we do not have um, the 20 plus years of presence that our competitors have competitors such as Mont Blanc, uh, DuPont, but we believe that we do have something unique in our brand. Um, the fact that we are a company with a value proposition targeting more towards your uh, average day-to-day -day consumer, we believe that is unique in itself. Um, since we are new, we can be modern up to the times and we can um, position ourselves as a socially relevant to our target consumers. Uh, the customer support, we want to provide an um, unmatched, unpaired customer experience when you think of brands such as Apple or Chick-fil-A. Um, one of the joys of shopping from these companies is the experience and the customer, uh, the experience of buying from them, that interaction you have from talking to the employees. And we uh, venture to try to bring that same feel of that customer support and experience, that elite um, support and experience um, through online means to our customers. And lastly, our marketing execution. The fact that luxury goods are now commonly marketed, um, we believe gives us an edge and gives us the ability to create innovative ads such as like uh, Nike and Apple. And lastly, startup cost, funding, and profit, because that's important for you, the investor. Um, startup cost, the fact that we're an e-commerce model allows us to be lean with most of our costs being um, our digital presence, um, our third-party store, Shopify, um, software automation tools, um, QuickBooks for filing Photoshop. These are all um, our, um, our overhead costs. But most of the bulk of cost of our business operations falls on marketing. Uh, a break-even analysis, um, the cost of a pen uh, off of a third-party distributor such as AliExpress, on average is about three dollars. Um, assuming that we mark it up to a sale of twenty dollars, that presents a gross margin of five hundred sixty-seven percent. Um, but most of that money uh, within that margin accounts for the customer acquisition and our marketing costs. So as our marketing gets more experience and is able to get more lean and effective, um, the more margin for profits that there will be. But based off of this. Um, this requires a total pens to break even a, for us to sell 442 a year um, to generate about 7,500 to cover our costs um, with an average quota of 37 pens a month. And we believe this is heavily realistic. You see, our funding model um, for our company is based off of three key components. Um, the consumer model, um, consumer-based funding, which the fact that our e-commerce model also institutes drop shipping meaning that we don't have to house any real inventory 
um, physically, but rather um, when a customer makes a purchase, it gets shipped directly from the warehouse to the customer, uh, meaning that we don't have to buy any inventory that's not already purchased for. Bootstrapping, uh, so customers will fund the product. Bootstrapping, uh, since it is a one-man show right now, I'll fund all the marketing costs, the, the upfront costs for software automation, etc. And lastly, open to taking um, taking um, investment funds from investors. Uh, now, speaking of investors, what would investors' returns look like? We'd be looking at um, an investment anywhere from the range of one thousand to five thousand dollars for uh, marketing expenses. That's how it would be used. Um, and with our business model and practice of and lean practices, investors can realistically expect 20 to 25 percent annual returns on their investment. So on a $1,000 investment, an uh, investor can expect $200 at the end of the year. Now, how realistic is it for investors to receive that 20 to 25 percent? We believe it's heavily realistic looking at the market study. Um, E-commerce growth, um, as shown earlier, has grown over 12 percent on average a year over the last couple of years. Um, and much more than that, the e-commerce market overview. Here's a breakdown in 2018 of how revenues were broken down within e-commerce. And the most notable is um, within the gray column, toys, hobbies, and do-it-yourself, is the hobby and stationery. Um, of the revenue generated via e-commerce in 2018, 20 million of that, um, oh, my apologies, 20 billion of that um, was generated in the hobby and stationery. Consumer behavior, online shoppers tend to be more price oriented than value oriented, meaning that they're not really looking for the luxury goods online, but rather they're looking for affordable costs. Um, as you see in the column, the last column here, stationary and hobby supplies, 29% uh, of consumers uh, place more relevance on lower priced product. So we believe that this creates, compared to 7% who place relevance on luxury premium products, so we believe if we can have the luxury premium products at that low price, price point, um, demand will increase. Now, as far as e-commerce goes, clothing tends to have the highest return rate, um, but notably um, in this column here, stationary and hobby supplies has a increasingly, uh, or has a significantly low return rate, only about only 2% of consumers seek to return their products, which is significant because with less people um, returning their products, that's um, less complaints. And with all that said, and with all that said, we, uh, that concludes our presentation. Um, we believe that this would be a strong company for you to invest in and um, be on the lookout for Griffin Pence. Thank you for your time.